the Japan session today. I'm Sayaka Wachida from JICA, Japan International Cooperation Agency, India office. This is uh, my pleasure to host a session with uh, wonderful support from our partner, IntelliCap team. Uh, we, JICA India office, launched a business matching platform called uh, SDGs Business Co-Creation Lab, also known as Tsunagal Lab, earlier this year. Tsunagal means to connect in Japanese. We named this, hoping this will be a place for aspired entrepreneurs to meet partners to make an impact in the social and developmental agendas in India. Today, we will showcase the unique products and business models of six companies, including the perspectives of a Japan invested Indian corporate and a Japanese venture capital based in India. So first, please welcome our chief representative of JICA India, Mr. Katsuo Matsumoto, for his opening remarks. Uh, Matsumoto Shocho, please. Yes, hi, hello, everyone. Uh, namaste. Uh, it is our pleasure to host the Japan session at Sankar Forum today. Uh, it has been almost uh, five years uh, since I started uh, talking with the founder of the Arabic car, Mr. Vinit, about how to connect the more uh, Indian social enterprise with Japanese companies. And it, uh, Mr. Bali, uh, Intercap, is also the very strong supporter for this idea. And the thanks to the uh, good understanding of two uh, persons, uh, we organized the first Japan session in Sakura Forum uh, last year. And the, uh, we would expect that the, the today's session is also a good opportunity for wider collaboration among the, the stakeholders in two uh, countries. We are delighted to invite the uh, speakers mainly from Japanese side today and the, uh, uh, we hope to see more and more Indian social enterprise in the audience today are uh, interested in uh, their presentations. And the, uh, according to the report recently released by the Indian Impact Investment Council, uh, investment in impact enterprise in India has reached about the, the 1 billion US dollar over the past decade. And the, uh, this growth trend is expected to continue and because of the huge uh, development demand in India and the uh, good uh, track record of the impact enterprise, I believe that the uh, impact enterprise in India are now major players in socio-economic development field uh, in various uh, areas in, in India. So we came to know that the many energetic impact entrepreneurs have tackled the difficult issues and they uh, have broken through many uh, challenges, through various forms of the innovation. Uh, because of this effort, uh, many low-income people can reach to the goods and services that they need. And the, uh, this is a very really big uh, contribution to the, the, uh, achieving the SDG in India. And the, even uh, during the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, uh, social enterprise, uh, say, uh, doing very great things. I know one of them, uh, which name is the, the Bindia in Infomedia in Bangalore. Uh, it is a business process operating company. And the, uh, what is different from the other BPO company is that uh, Bindia employs over the 700 uh, people with disabilities. Uh, in the lockdown period, uh, this company has quickly uh, created a work from home environment for the people with disabilities uh, in order to minimize the negative impact on the employees. And this was achieved by the uh, strong passion, uh, quick decision, and the very uh, pragmatic actions of the top leaders and the staff of this uh, company. And in other case, uh, in JICA supported project in agriculture area, uh, we are glad to see that the, the one company has developed a good mobile application a system uh, that connect the, the farmer's crop uh, directly with the dealer to help uh, securing the farmer's income. And these companies uh, that are using their wisdom and the technology to tackle challenges quickly and the really truly, uh, truly impactful are very, very impressed. The, I know that some of the, the uh, participants and audience today uh, continuing to work in the midst of this uh, uh, corona uh, pandemic 
and the I'd like to uh, pay really tribute to them. Uh, recently, the, as Mr. Ochida uh, mentioned that JICA has set up a platform to connect Japanese companies with Indian social enterprise. The purpose of this is to know uh, about the, the activities of the both parties and to expand the uh, uh, possibilities for uh, cooperation. Uh, today's session uh, can be as part of this Tsunaru uh, uh, Labos effort. I encourage uh, you to uh, take the uh, disadvantage of today's uh, session to increase your uh, understanding of the contact uh, for the, the uh, cooperation uh, between the Japanese and the Indian companies. Uh, JICA has a will to support your activities uh, through the various types of the cooperation like uh, finance, uh, research funding, and so on. And lastly, uh, I'd like to thank all the Japanese companies uh, that are uh, participating in this session today. I am very looking forward to uh, listening to uh, your presentation. And the, I also like to thank the Abishkar and Indrika uh, for the understanding of the JICA's activities and the, the, your say, continuous support to us. So uh, I hope the, all of you uh, enjoy uh, today's session. Uh, thank you uh, for your attention. Thank you very much, Mr. Matsumoto. Uh, next, we'd like to have uh, Mr. Vikas Bari from in a CEO of IntelliCAP for his opening remarks. Thank you very much, uh, Uchida-san. Uh, very good morning to all the participants and uh, a very, very warm welcome to Matsumoto-san. Uh, our association goes back a very, very long time. Over the last four to five years, we've been working very closely with uh, uh, JICA, uh, on this initiative to get uh, social enterprises from India uh, and uh, Japan to connect with each other, to collaborate and co-create uh, initiatives which will help uh, the Indian uh, impact entrepreneurs and the Japanese impact entrepreneurs deliver change in areas of agriculture, medical, education, financial inclusion, water sanitation and others. I'm deeply thankful to Matsumoto-san for showing the intention uh, and demonstrating it over the last four years to make this vision come into reality. A few days ago, I spoke about intention, ideas, and investments as being key to making any large-scale transformation happen. And this initiative uh, is clearly representative of all these three eyes that I spoke about. The intention to make conversations happen between the Japanese uh, entrepreneurs and the Indian entrepreneurs and Japanese investors and other investors in general is an intention that Matsumoto-san and JICA have clearly demonstrated and they have worked very assiduously in making this uh, happen. Uh, the ideation led to the creation of the Sungaru Lab. I hope my pronunciation is okay, but apologies if it is not. Uh, and uh, I'm very confident that investments will certainly follow through. In my experience of watching uh, impact enterprises scale up, there are three things that uh, are very, very key. First is uh, commercialization of technology. The second is access to markets. And the third is access to finance. And this initiative uh, will hopefully pave the way over a period of time to make all these three themes come together. Commercialization of technology, we know that uh, Japan has been uh, the torchbearer in using technologies, has demonstrated in industry after industry. And hopefully this exchange um, between the impact enterprises uh, in India, in Japan, uh, lead to uh, uh, creation of uh, much better, much better opportunities uh, for both sets. Uh, the ability to attract investments uh, is uh, also very key, but that doesn't happen in a day. So to all the enterprises who are starting their conversations with investors, it is a journey which takes uh, anywhere between 18 and 24 months. If it happens earlier, fantastic, but stay the course. And you will certainly find uh, the right kind of capital coming your way 
if your business models are being able to make the change happen on the ground. Last but not the least is the access to markets. And as all of you are aware, India is a very large market uh, with a growing middle class. There has been a temporary setback because of COVID, but hopefully it will present newer opportunities for itself in the space of medical, for example, in the space of mobility, wireless, for instance, in the space of agriculture and using technologies for enhancing productivity of agriculture. So a lot of these opportunities will open up for uh, entrepreneurs. And I'm sure with the technology progress of um, Japan uh, and with the large market that India offers and the opportunities for India, the, the entrepreneurs will certainly be able to uh, leverage the strengths of both the Japanese and the Indian markets to create sustainable change. Uh, I know we have a lot of interesting conversations uh, from uh, EdTech company, a medical devices company, uh, a renewable energy company, a company who's working on women empowerment. Uh, we'll also be probably getting an opportunity to uh, listen from a company which has raised capital. So all of these are very, very interesting conversations for us um, to uh, understand how do we leverage this opportunity. Uh, well begun is half done and I'm very proud to be associated um, uh, as IntelliCap with uh, JICA's initiative. And I'm very grateful for Matsumoto-san for considering us uh, for this uh, opportunity. Let's chat, let's collaborate, let's co-create something which will lead to a lasting impact. Thank you very much for your time and for giving us the opportunity to work together. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Bali, for your warm remarks. Uh, next, we will move to the presentation from Japanese companies. Um, the first presenter is Dr. Yo Ishigaki from Yaguchi Electric Corporation that has developed the technology for children who are suffering uh, ambiopia. He's a chief technology officer and also the specially appointed associate professor of National University of Electrocommunications. Um, and before uh, his presentation, just uh, uh, please note that. Uh, so uh, if you have any questions to the presenters, please use the chat function. Then we will pick up the questions and respond in the Q&A session after the, all the presentations finished. Thank you. So please uh, go for your presentation, Dr. Ishigaki. Hello, IntelliCap. Konnichiwa, uh, Matsumoto Shocho. This is Dr. Yo Ishigaki from Yaguchi Electric Corporation in Japan. Uh, namaste, namaste. And uh, today I'd like to show you the topic about ambryopia treatment using our product called, called Oculutab. So do you know ambryopia? It is so-called lazy eye like this. So the ambryopia, oops, sorry. So do you know that 3% of newborn babies are affected by ambryopia, so-called lazy eye, for every races in our globe? It's very big figure. So, and uh, it's very interesting because the ambryopia is mostly curable. If treated before six years or eight years old because our visual cortex in our brain is plastic. I mean, it's soft, fixable before age of six or eight years old. So the gold standard to cure the ambryopia is eye patching, patching on healthy eye but it has serious side effects, such as mental pain, worries, or skin rashes. 
So as a result, the compliance adherence is very low, such as only 30% of patients do eye patching after four months treatment. It's pretty low figure. So this is our solution. We developed a specially designed tablet having polarization, polarization LCD. So uh, if you or the patient wear specially designed glasses, then the amblyopic eye, only amblyopic eye can see the screen as normal like this. I'd like to show you a quick video demonstration here. A Oculpad という治療装置を作りました。この装置には目に見えない液晶ディスプレイの技術が採用されています。これは左目が弱視の患者が使うサングラスなので、左目からだけ画面が見えます。両目を開けていても弱視の目だけに映像刺激を与えられるので利用ができます。指が小さい3歳児でも扱えるよう専用のブロックも開発しました。あのファミコンやタマゴッチを発明したコトという会社と協力することで楽しいゲームが10種類もできました子供はゲームに夢中になりますすると手と目の共応により脳血流が活性 OK sorry the trans transcription is only in Japanese but the tablet is has、uh, eight games they are pre-installed in it and it's very effective For vision training in pediatric amblyopia children. So, Oculpad is a world first binocular gaming tab providing safer and more effective treatment. And it is easier for patients to use. So, this is Oculpad, and we provide three glasses. One is for right eye treatment, another one is for left eye treatment. And the last one is for parents, both sides. So, binocular vision is very effective to fix amblyopia. This is our laboratory testing results because binocular vision produces eye hand, good eye hand coordination so that it, it generates a better stimulation of visual cortex in your brain. And this is some,、uh, we also some clinical study results in、uh, Japanese,、uh, sorry, this is in Indian pediatric patients,、uh, especially this is about anisometric amblyopia patients. And、uh, as a result, o c u l t a b is more effective in vision fixation than patching. And also in strabismus、uh, amblyopia patients. So、they have a squint of eyes. So, there's also, it shows also Oculab is always effective, more effective than patching group based on randomized testing. And regarding、uh, adherence, compliance, Oculab is better than patching. So, now we have three academic papers. in In international journals. So, if you are interested in that, I can share them with you. So, this is a message from our counterpart. He's a medical doctor, of ophthalmologist in Chivil Hospital Ahmedabad, Gujarat. Because children were not comfortable with the patching, there were so many problems due to patching, like the eye,、uh, skin rashes. Compliance, social stigma, and nowadays children are more interested for the gaming. So, by playing a game, we are stimulating the vision of the lazy eye. So, obviously, the o c c l u t a b e would be very, very useful for children having a poor vision in one eye. So, now we are focusing in India because India has a most great number of amblyopia patients. Because of their bone rate. So, market is huge, we believe. And this project is now supported by JICA. JICA. And we have 15 collaborators in India already. So, we can connect each other. So, we need more collaboration. 
like technologically or uh, clinical testing or new software gaming development or like a local manufacturing company or resellers. So please feel free to contact to me for future development of Oculus. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Ishigaki, for your wonderful presentation. Uh, next, we are moving to the next pre presentation from, uh, sorry, just hold on, from uh, Langley, um, uh, Ms. Saki Wataishi. Please go ahead for your presentation. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes, we can see your screen. Okay, let me start. So good morning, everyone. Thank you for having me here today. I still remember last year's Japan session clearly. That was my very first week in India. So it's great to see you all again in this Sankal Forum. So let me introduce myself first. Uh, I'm Saki Wataishi, entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneur with Enrico and the founder of Langori Blonde. And I started my career as a software engineer, then become active feminist. And the lady next to me is Ryoko. She is my business partner and is joining this session together. So our mission is to unleash the potential for everyone. Langori is committed to, their, uh, to, committed to offer comfortable, stylish, and uh, spellier quality women's infinite wear in India. Our product will help a woman to enhance her self-image, express who she really is, and aid her development. Through our profitable growth, we will support and empower the community of women, designers, and Indian artisans and the makers by creating job opportunities, help skill development, providing a dignified work environment and enabling inclusion. This will make the Indian society that each individual can reach their maximum, maximum potential. And many of you joining today's session may know what Langoli is. Langoli is a flower pattern drawn on the ground or floor by using colored lights. Now, uh, you see the picture, right? And uh, this is drawn for Diwali. So this is, uh, it's coming now and it's a bigger festival of, of the year in India. So Langoli calls for good luck at home. It's drawn by women and symbolizes women. So we mix it together, Langoli and Langeli. So this is our brand name. So our brown tagline is liberate yourself. Langoli will liberate, you, liberate customers from pain of finding exact size of loss and the pain of, pain of the hard wires and also pain of using one time use only sanitary napkins. Then Langoli will provide simple sizing blouse and wire free gloss with support and reusable period proof shorts. So our products are now available on Amazon India. So if you have chance, please, ch uh, please check it out. So today, uh, let me introduce the latest ongoing project of Langoli, which is selected as JICA's SDGs business support program. So have you watched a movie, Patman? That was, uh, I think it was brought uh, on the show, on the theater in Japan too. This movie is a success story of a man who invented the method to manufacture affordable sanitary napkins. In the movie, his wife couldn't use the sanitary napkins. Now let me share the fact data, how Indian women deal with periods. In urban area, 30% of women uses sanitary napkins and 
10% in rural area. Uh, this data is actually from 2015. I'm hoping that this situation is getting better now. And 62% uh, in the population uses clothes and some people use ash or soil to, uh, to absorb period blood. This situation will cause these challenges. Number one, risk of infection disease or toxic shock syndrome. Also, the ladies or girls cannot go to school and cannot help family business to avoid messing around. Even they can use sanitary napkins, there are still problem of how to process the chemical waste. So why this happened? So one of the background is the lack of proper menstruation education. Period is regarded as an appropriate topic to discuss or teach, and it's a taboo to talk in public. And the proper menstruation education is not given by school. And also most parents don't want to teach or probably uh, maybe they don't know the importance of the hygiene care. And another background is the cost of sanitary napkins. That was also uh, described in, in the Patman movie. So this morning I checked the price of bestseller item of sanitary napkin in Amazon India website. And it, it says it costs 7.68 rupees for one napkins. According to the research report from Jetolo, women in India uses eight napkins for each cycle. So actually this number is surprisingly low from my perspective. So I expect period will come every month, then multiply 12, and it will cost 737 rupees per year. This is expensive for the people who live under average. And this is a, this is a cost for one time use only napkins. So it will become a waste. As a solution to tackle this challenge, the first thing we would do is provide education, collaborating with the local NGOs which will visit the schools and uh, provide the menstruation education and sanitary goods. So far we have some potential partners, but uh, we are quite open for other partners. And the, other, the second solution we would like to provide is launching the usable period absorbing shorts and napkins. There will be uh, washable and reusable. So it's ecological, uh, economical and uh, it's reusable, so it's also ecological too. And we, are, uh, we will use the antibacterial uh, and the deodorant material, so they, can use, uh, so they can use it repeatedly without the risk of any infection uh, diseases. We have two different business models for shorts and napkins. For shorts, urban women are the target customers. So that is a uh, current Langoli's uh, target customers. The so Langoli will provide the shorts and receive the payment in return. And Langoli will use the part of profit for providing menstruation education and napkins for, for the girls who is in rural area. This is actually not just a social activity. This will the, also the activity to nurture the future potential customers. And for the napkins, uh, we will have uh, the napkins, we will use less materials, so we could uh, price lower than shorts. Then the target customer would be women in rural area. The other model is uh, same as previous stage. So far, we have a prospect production partner, uh, partner, which is a skill training center belonging to a shelter for survivors of domestic violence. In this facility, that uh, more than 20 women live together and receiving both soft and hard skill training. 
at the soft skill, they uh, they teach teamwork and bookkeeping and internal interpersonal skill for their rich life after leaving shelter. Now, this project still needs to validate many things since there are so much uncertainty. Firstly, we need to validate the demand out there. For, for sure, I believe there are huge demand, but the price requirement will be, uh, will be very strict, I expect. So we need to determine what price line will be accept acceptable in this market. Also, washing, uh, washing environment is critical. I know the, uh, the water, quality of the water is not always the best, uh, best, for, uh, best for period shots in India. So that, that area has to, uh, has to make it clear. Also, supply chain is also critical. And uh, we currently, we are using the materials from Japan, but uh, we, uh, we, we are going to use the local materials so, uh, so is that, those are available in there and uh, they can meet the expected uh, price line. So with those research, we need to validate the bus both business continuity and also the, if that, this project could provide the positive impact to lo local community. So, uh, so today uh, we would like to meet the potential production partner yeah. and also a uh, menstruation educational pa uh, education partner. So I'm looking forward to networking with you during this event. Thank you for this. <coughs> Thank you, Nisu Watanshi, for your wonderful presentation. We understand your product will contribute to the welfare of women. Um, next, we will have a presentation from OMC Power, uh, Mr. Anil Raji, CEO and co-founder of OMC Power, for the perspective from an Indian corporate, uh, having an investment and partnership with a Japanese company. Please, Mr. Raji. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, uh, am I audible? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, so first of all, thank you so much uh, to JICA for inviting uh, OMC uh, and Mitsui to this uh, very prestigious uh, Sankalp conference. And obviously, thank you to Avishkar and Telecap also. Uh, so let me start by sharing uh, my screen here. I have a little presentation I'd like to share with you. Uh, yes, yeah, so uh, this is a brief overview of uh, OMC, the company, uh, and what we do uh, here in India. Uh, so OMC is a rural power utility. Uh, we build uh, and operate power plants, uh, mostly in rural areas of India, which lack uh, power today. Uh, and, uh, you know, this is our vision and uh, our mission really. So what we want to do is to build the leading power infrastructure company in emerging markets, not just India. Uh, and our goal is to bring reliable and affordable power to millions of people and thousands of enterprises and advance social and economic development. And our mission, the way we do that is by building, uh, owning, operating power plants and mini grids uh, where we serve telecom companies uh, businesses and also communities in uh, in the rural areas. So to start off, you know, to give you an idea of exactly uh, what it is we build, here is uh, an image of uh, a typical uh, OMC power plant. Uh, this is one of our earlier plants. It's a rather small plant, but I think it gives a good overview of uh, exactly what it is we do. Uh, so you can see the village uh, and the community uh, in the background here uh, and the two telecom towers. Now this is uh, you know, very representative of uh, uh, what it looks like in uh, most parts of rural India. Uh, and you can see the location of the, tower, uh, of the power plant there. Uh, and that is uh, what we've set up. And uh, we construct a grid to distribute the energy. Uh, which then feeds power to 
the telecom towers and to the village. So I think this image gives kind of a good overview of what we do. Uh, some numbers to give you a sense of perspective. Uh, so today, uh, OMC operates uh, in the region of 200 power plants, uh, and these are distributed across the northern Indian states here, as you can see, UP, Bihar, and Jharkhand. Uh, and in total, we've built about 13 megawatts of capacity distributed across these 200 power plants. Uh, and this energy is distributed by uh, 275 kilometers of grid, which we have constructed. Uh, and then the offtake of this goes to about 225 towers and data centers. Uh, and we provide power to all the mobile operators in India. And in addition to that, we have some 20,000 small business uh, and retail customers today. Uh, a few words about our business model. Uh, so we have a diverse business model, actually. Uh, and uh, uh, OMC has pioneered what we call the ABC business model. ABC stands for Anchor Business and Community, where telecom is the anchor load, business uh, is the second focus, and then finally, uh, the residential customers or the community customers, uh, which we supply power to. Uh, about half the plants that we have today uh, follow this model. We also have what we call the A only model, where we build power plants which only supply power to telecom towers today. Uh, and then, you know, what's emerging and what's in the pipeline now is the BC and the ABC plus model, uh, where we build power plants only to supply power to businesses uh, and residences. And then finally, you know, the evolved model. Uh, where we not only generate power, but we also start building EV charging stations uh, and we start uh, uh, filtration plants for providing clean drinking water. Because the uh, uh, key ingredient for you know, safe clean drinking water obviously is water, but also energy. Uh, it's very energy intensive, uh, resource intensive to filter and clean water. And of course, we being an energy company, it makes sense for us to do that as well. And uh, for those wondering what a typical power plant looks like, here is a little layout describing the general architecture. So the bulk of the power which OMC generates comes from solar. Uh, and this can be anywhere from 50 to 100 kilowatts. Uh, and this is supplemented by uh, diesel or CNG, uh, where the case may be, uh, as a backup. And then we store this power in, uh, 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 batteries, uh, which is then distributed as 220 volts, uh, you know, the regular grid uh, through poles and wires, just as we're used to. Uh, and this goes to our customers, both commercial and residential customers. So here's a little overview showing uh, the distribution of our plants uh, on a map. So you can see it's fairly diverse and this covers a broad area of northern India. Uh, and the three northern states of uh, UP, Bihar, and Jharkhand currently. Uh, all our plants are built along pretty much the same lines. We have a cookie cutter kind of an approach, so highly standardized. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, we do this to drive our costs down, simplify maintenance. So this really is the face of rural infrastructure uh, of the future, you could say. So again, small scale, local energy, 50 to 100 kilowatt uh, power plants is what we build, located right next to the communities that we serve. Uh, along with that, a network of uh, uh, some, today some 275 kilometers of grid, which distributes this net network, uh, the, which distributes this energy. Uh, and uh, uh, a large customer for us today are the telecom networks where we are kind of a grid equivalent uh, energy provider. Uh, we, and we provide a 99.95% availability. Uh, one of the key uses for power uh, that we've noticed is to increase productivity. So uh, customers use it for oil extraction, for milling. Uh, we've seen a number of uh, you know, niche 
uh, agricultural products like honey processing units, which uh, have started using power for their processes. A uh, number of small scale manufacturing companies have uh, come up uh, and been set up which utilize power and these would not have been there or possible uh, were it not for you know, cheap uh, and clean power. Uh, small scale dairy, milk is an expensive and easily perishable product uh, and having refrigeration uh, you know, vastly increases the profitability of these small enterprises. And of course, to homes, uh, you know, the bulk of our users are the uh, communities and homes where we provide lighting and small things like uh, fans and uh, phone charging and so on. And finally, like I was mentioning, uh, water purification is now uh, a big thrust area for us uh, since we've uh, clearly identified that, you know, this is a low hanging fruit, so to speak, uh, and has the potential to make a very large impact uh, on the health of the communities that we serve. Uh, and we're doing this in India as we speak, and uh, the company is preparing also to uh, uh, enter to several African markets where we will take the learnings and the expertise that we've built up in the last 10 years uh, and take them to some select markets in Africa together with Mitsui, our partner. Uh, very quick timeline, uh, the company is 10 years old uh, and uh, you know, through the journey, uh, we've obviously learned a lot and developed our business model. And we were joined in this journey uh, by our uh, Japanese partner, Mitsui and company in 2017. Uh, and together now, uh, we're continuing to build. Uh, we have some 200 plants today, as I mentioned. That number will rise to 1,000 uh, you know, within the next 18 months. Uh, and also, we're uh, kind of imminent uh, now in entering uh, some markets in Africa uh, together. So this has been uh, uh, widely recognized worldwide. I think uh, uh, this concept of uh, you know, not building large coal-fired or oil-fired power plants, but using small <clears throat> micro power plants to deliver power locally, uh, I think has opened a lot of eyes. Uh, we've had a lot of interest from a number of large global media uh, institutions and organizations like World Economic Forum, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, uh, we are happy to uh, uh, continue, obviously, uh, and with the support of uh, Mitsui, and uh, we hope uh, and we're confident that you know this company will grow to be a force to reckon with, especially in the rural areas, uh, both of India and uh, emerging markets in Africa. So uh, that was all I had to say. Thank you so much for this opportunity. We appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Raji, for your presentation on your business models and for the, your, your work for, to the communities. Uh, next presenter is uh, Dream Incubator, a venture cap Japanese venture capital investing in India. The presenter is Mr. Munehiko Eto. From, um, he's a senior manager incubation of Dream Incubator. Please go ahead, Mr. Eto. Uh, I try to... Uh show my presentation screen, but I cannot. I don't know why. Um, sorry, the Intercap team, can you support no, him? I, like I'll just have a look, I'll just have a look. You, you should be sorted now. Go ahead and try again. Oh, okay, so I can do, I can do. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes. Can you see? Yes, we can now. Oh, okay, thank you for uh, okay, thank you for giving a uh, precious opportunity. I'm very happy to make a presentation and introduce uh, what Dream Incubator is, and what uh, Dream Incubator is doing in India. So, uh, Dream Incubator is a Japanese venture capital uh, established in 2000, and uh, so we mainly invest uh, in uh, U.S. and Japan and Asia uh, market. And in Asian market, India is a, a, a main focus of our investment uh, in investment. And this is our investment team uh, for India, 
So we have three people, including me and two Indian colleagues. And uh, we have a, a team in Southeast Asia and Japan, and we have a, a 70 people consulting team. So we are a Japanese venture capital uh, with the largest team, uh, which can promote business producing between our investees and Japanese corporations. And uh, this is uh, the investment track record. So we invested in 180 companies across eight countries and 30 photo companies went to public so far. And this is an Indian track record. Uh, we invest in 25 uh, Indian startups and mainly in uh, tech companies, uh, B2C, B2B, B2C, B2 SME focus. And uh, we took uh, three investment uh, as a real investor and uh, one exit. And this is a, a explanation about our, our track record. And we have a, a, my, one of my portfolio company become a unicorn company. And we invested in MetRife. MetRife was, was merged with uh, Farm Easy. And uh, so the, this became a, a unicorn company. And uh, so two years ago, uh, I, I'm very honored, I was very honored to make a small presentation to Mr. Modi. And it's a very mo memorable moment for my uh, life. And this is uh, our uh, investees, uh, and our investees have created social impacts in India. And uh, this vertical axis is uh, the, the SDG goals, growth, jobs, and innovation, and basic needs, especially healthcare, and equality and opportunity. And uh, this, this role, for example, uh, InstaMojo, is a, this is a payment gateway company, which empowers uh, small and medium-sized companies. And in the case of Brohon, this is an inter intracity logistics platform, and this supports small uh, truck business owners. And in case of LBB, this is a local discovery platform, and this supports small shops to find the customers on the web. And uh, this is a health by me. This is health app uh, to uh, support people prevent from disease, chronic disease. And MedRife, this is e-pharmacy, and uh, e-pharmacy e e business is, uh, uh, is very important under COVID-19 because people cannot go to drug stores. And uh, uh, Tricop, this is, I will explain detailed data that this is a certified ECG solution. This can help uh, to do early detection of heart disease. And next company is a breast cancer screening. This also helps women uh, to detect uh, breast cancer. Uh, area and the uh, cancer treatment platform. So as you know, India, so the information asymmetry exists between patients and doctors and the patients don't know uh, which hospital, which doctor, which treatment are uh, suitable for, for them. And this company supports patients to give information uh, and to choose the right hospital uh, and right doctor, right treatment. And uh, this is a Care24 home care aggregator, and this helps to improve home care in India. And THB, this is a healthcare big data. Improve, this can uh, help uh, improve uh, patient outcomes. And in equality and opportunity space, many of you, this is a digital consumer loan. Uh, this improves loan access to middle class people. So, and uh, I want to uh, summarize, I want to explain uh, the digital disruption is very important to solve social issues. Uh, as you know, uh, on the left side, so this, this chart explains such increase in smartphone users in India. So according to Statistista, Statista, uh, 700 million people own smartphones right now. It's pretty big number. And uh, currently, so disrupt disruptive innovation happens by uh, IT technology and the smart home centric society. So technology disrupt the like uh, startups disrupt the traditional companies, industries, and the in, the, in case of FinTech, banks, edtech, schools, health tech, hospitals. So digital disruption has significantly changed the so social economy in emerging countries, including India. And this is an example for my portfolio company, the Manebu. So the, on the left side, this is an issue. Uh, 240 million household cannot borrow from banks. 
And uh, so this is a, a segmentation, affluent segment, aspire segment, and struggler segment. And this segment, some of this segment, uh, segment can borrow from microfinance, but this segment cannot borrow anywhere. However, recently AI-based digital consumer lending companies provide instant loan to this segment. And based on the da big data and uh, analyzing the data and to create a, a personal credit standing. And this consumer loan is, uh, the interest rate is lower than the interest average and uh, this vast in four hours, not four days, four hours and lower default ratio and no collateral. And this company, Maneview, uh, provided 250,000 loan, uh, new loans uh, in the last fiscal year. And I think uh, uh, access to the, this kind of loan helps middle class to expand their economic opportunities. And the uh, next uh, uh, example is the early detection hard failures. This is also my portfolio company, Tricoc. And the issue, what we can say, we cannot sell medium hearts in India Treatment within one hour after heart attack is critical, but treatment are given after five hours in India. So this is an Indian average 410 minutes to get treatment after the, the symptom onset. But uh, this company provides a, a, a solution, uh, creating a diagnostic report in six minutes. So uh, the, ECG, the doctors in uh, GP, GP doctors uh, take uh, ECG data, and this data is automatically sent to Tricoc server. Tricoc server analyzes the score, and uh, the Tricoc server uh, gives uh, feedback to the doctors. And uh, this, this, this takes just six minutes. And uh, so this uh, report can uh, tell the, what is the risk of heart failure. And uh, what Tricoc achieved the last six years, diagnosed more than 3 million people, and saved 90,000 lives and supported 2,600 medical professionals. Uh, and the next one, this is a last one. So uh, Dream Incubator is trying to, uh, this is a job, what we are doing in Japan, social impact bond to social issue. So this is a bond, uh, so private bond and a, a governmental bond. This is the out of the base revenue uh, comes if the this service achieve a certain level. And uh, so we try to experiment in elderly care prevention. If you reduce degree of care of the population in the community, we can reduce the healthcare expenditure as well as elderly care expenditure. And these reduction, the reduced cost will be our uh, income source uh, for this output based revenue. And we also raise the funds from investors and we will pay back based on the output-based output revenue. And thank you very much, uh, uh, Dream Incubator. And if you have any questions, uh, uh, please uh, send me, uh, send an email to my email address and or please access to my Dream Incubator India uh, homepage. And thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Eto, your, your presentation. So now we will move to a Japanese company, um, uh, Amegumi India. Uh, Mr. Kotaro Fukuoka, please go ahead. Yes, thank you. Moment. Now, can you see the screen? Yes. Yes. yes thank you thank you thank you so much for giving us uh, such a precious occasion to the presentation here this is Kotaro Fukuoka from Amegumi India itself I'm director of Amegumi India uh, we Amegumi develop operating system for smartphone and the tablet let me explain this is our company profile actually we our Incorporation has just done on this April itself during lockdown. Oh, so we just started as an Indian entity. And the Amegumi stands for Ame means rain, Megumi means grace in Japanese word, Ame, Amegumi. So we make the world, every single people don't give up their goals or dreams because of external reasons. This is the reason why we do business 
or in India as well as in Japan. This slide shows the, uh, our team members. We have Japanese CTO and uh, Japanese technology members and the CEO and uh, I'm in charge of India as well as uh, whole overseas sales like Rwanda or Nicaragua as well. And the two advisors and uh, some oh, investors are here. And uh, Amegumi's vision, as I told, to make the world where everyone lives their life happily. To make this vision come true, we have the mission to make the world where no one has to give up because of external reason. For example, oh, no one has to say, I have to give up because I was born here. And no one is left behind in this digital world by providing tool to access information. Like we can discuss with Zoom as of now, but for the people who don't have such a tool, there is no occasion, I mean the opportunity to access, of course. And how we do is to distribute original high secure operating system and affordable device smartphone to improve business and the quality of life itself. By the way, this slide shows the smartphone penetration rate in India as of 2018, so two years back. At that time, 26%. Of course, this number shows higher than this as of now. Oh, according to some articles, 50% or so as of now. But still, 50% of people in India don't have smartphone. It means that don't have access to useful app, don't have access to browser information. And uh, since uh, I live in India, as of now, I mean uh, Gurugaon, and uh, Gurugaon as well, uh, many schools has closed because of lockdown from the end of March. So if children have their smartphone or tablet or laptop, or they can take online class, but otherwise no way to take. So it means there are huge gaps between the people, I mean the children who have the smartphone or such a tool and the people who have. And otherwise, like the online school, online lesson, e-learning app, such a like or service wants to reach out to the every single side. Like for example, schools or educational NGOs or even government are looking for some tool to distribute their services. Of course, for that purpose, the tool must be affordable and secured and as well as or no entertainment function, since children tend to utilize smartphones as just to watch entertainment videos as well as just gaming. They want to avoid that. To solve these issues, we developed the original operating system as a software from Japan. Sunbrace is the brand name of our smartphone. We have three features. First, affordable. We sell 3,000 Indian rupee in India. And the limited function, we don't have any game. We don't have any entertainment. And uh, the last is smooth use with high security. People can use at least three years with our smartphone. Actually, our role is software development. So we ask OEM to make affordable device. We don't care much about the design things like uh, Apple, but we will take care of operating system and the app as well. So as I mentioned, we develop operating system based on Android 8.1, and we maintain high security to uh, prevent from malfunctions. And at the same time, we develop original app store you, uh, excuse me, but your smartphone must have some app store like Google Play or uh, Apple iOS app store. Similar to that, we have our original app store. It means that we can control which app can be our store, which app cannot be our store. With this function, 
we don't allow any kind of gaming tool, entertainment tool, to our store. This call, uh, we call this limited function. Thanks to, to this device, oh, now teacher can distribute online class by Zoom with Zoom, and they can send PDF material with WhatsApp, and the uh, e-learning contents are here. So now the children can take online class. Let me introduce one example. Uh, now, uh, one famous organization collaborates with us. You may know Super Sadi, founder Mr. Anand Kumar, since the movie was uh, there last, last year. They do free school with free accommodation partner Bihar, and the film named Super Sadi has launched uh, with his honorable achievement to enter like uh, IIT things. And he will utilize our smartphone to the online class for underprivileged children. And he will start on this month itself. And this slide shows the attraction so far. Uh, we do business all over the world and uh, Rwanda, uh, Brazil, as well as uh, India, of course, and Myanmar. And the online education is the one main factor as well, uh, sorry, one main sector. At the same time, we focus on agricultural area as well. Since many farmers don't have smartphone, if they have smartphone, it's very easy to communicate with each other to share the uh, efficient information. And this slide shows why we do business uh, in terms of marketing things. Uh, as you know, all other smartphones have entertainment tool, so it's not the best to distribute by organization. Thank you. And uh, please feel free to contact me, like NGOs, NPO, a Foundation for Good Cause, as well as the CSR activity itself to help the people with smartphone, education, agriculture, and healthcare field. And if you have app or IoT de devices, or and you want to distribute into the rural area, we can uh, expand your take in together. And we are thinking of distributor as well as the now things are that China India uh, situation is here. So now we are looking for good OEM in India as well. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Fukuoka, for your presentation. So now we are moving to the, our final presenter of today. Uh, it's EV that has developed a, a lithium ion battery, which is suitable for the use in the high temperature environment in India. Uh, Mr. Uh, sorry, Mr. Kazuo Chiba, president of its EV, and Mr. Takashi Shimada from Indo Business Center, IBC. IBC a consulting firm supporting its EV. Uh, please join. Please join now. We are not able to hear you. Prob. Um, hello, Mr. Chiba. I think you are muted. No, uh, maybe useful for you to log out and log back in uh, because uh, sometimes uh, there are these challenges. So if this is not working out, I would request you to log out and log back in. Okay. Oh, I, we heard you just now. Okay.
Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. Please proceed. Okay. okay. Uh, I'm uh, Chiba. I was worked in uh, for Nissan and produced the uh, Ultra EV. Uh, that is uh, uh, for California ZEV EV uh, regulations. And the, the world first uh, lithium ion battery equipped in the world. And uh, my company, uh, HCV, is an engineering company, especially for the EV related uh, technology. As you know, that uh, uh, there is many reasons for to uh, India uh, need uh, electric vehicles soon. And the first issue is uh, uh, battery industry. We started battery market uh, research program with JICA last year. And uh, we already developed the prototype battery to adopt for Indian high temperature climate. And uh, there's many reason uh, to uh, introduce electric vehicle into uh, India because that uh, uh, many, uh, many, many uh, things, climate change and uh, uh, air quality. Next. And the uh, EV spread will reduce the consumption of the petroleum. And uh, we need to set up electricity supply path to the uh, EV and the renewable energy from the sol uh, solar panel and the facility to drive, uh, uh, delivery the electricity infrastructure. Storage battery is uh, the key device for the uh, solar panel. And this is the charging battery from the uh, solar panel and the charging point from the uh, from the solar panel energy to the uh, electric vehicles. And the uh, charging point operation for three wheelers uh, solar charging point can support the operator of the requirement uh, and uh, EV requires the energy path of the charge. It's at the first renewable energy uh, from solar panel is the first choice. The support to support electric vehicle operation, we need to set up charging point before uh, electric vehicles. And this is the experience in Japan or in California, we did. And the solar charging point with battery storage, uh, we need to be public, uh, to the public budget will help the startup of the demand for our battery industry to introduce the charging point. And this is the, uh, our developed, we already developed the uh, high temperature resistant battery. Uh, this is the uh, recharger. This is a deterioration rate is a very good, uh, uh, very uh, good fall from the uh, deterioration rate is uh, in uh, 50 degrees uh, resistance of the heat. And uh, in India, because of the high temperature, the Chinese or Japanese or any foreign batteries cannot work uh, in India. So we would like to make a localized and tropicalized battery industry is uh, required at the first in India. Thank you for the, uh, uh, I would like to set the video.
配合を調整して暑さへの耐久性が高い製品を開発の配合を調整して暑さへの耐久性が高い製品を開発バッテリーの寿命はこれまでの2倍ほどにまで改良されたといいます。パーフェクトパーフェクトパーフェクトパーフェクトこれで最後ですね。最後ね。終わりです。終わりなの？ちょっと待って。Thank you very much, Mr. Hi, thank you very much.、Uh, this is uh, uh, our uh, product in the, uh, in the active activity in the India、uh, last year.、Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Uchida san? Yes, thank you very much,、yes. Mr. For your presentation. So, we have completed all the six presentations. So, now we are moving to QA session.、Uh, we have only 10 minutes, so we pick up、uh, only a few questions、uh, from the chat message you have sent. So, first,、uh, I'd like to request、uh, Ms. Wataishi Langori to respond to this question. Uh, there has been some success with involving women from local communities in helping to raise awareness about the menstruation and also act as a distribution partners for feminine hygiene products. Have you explored such an avenue? Yeah,、uh, thanks for the, the question. So, I currently communicate with the local NGO based in Mumbai. But the no other area. So, if you,、uh, so, and also main members in、uh, acting in that NGO is currently uh, uh, get out,、uh, fly back to Japan, and they're currently they are not very active. So, if you can connect me to,、uh, to those NGO,、uh, NGO or distribution partner, that would be really helpful for my business. So, yeah,、uh, so the,、uh, if, you can, uh, if you can connect me to the, those p a r t n e r or sharing the name of the avenue, then、uh, that would be great. Maybe it's not answering the question, maybe I'm asking the help. So, but、sure. the, so yeah, guess, hopefully, hopefully、yeah. it answers. Sure. So,、uh, let's connect、uh, separately on this.、Uh... Uh, and uh, we'll see if we,、uh, uh, who we can probably、uh, partner you with. And I'm sure there are a number of、uh, people who are participating at Sankalp, also NGOs who are present, and also social entrepreneurs、uh, who may be able to、uh, partner with you.、Uh, would request you to keep、uh, uh, um, use the umbrella to actually reach out to them and、uh, also reach out to us after Sankalp is over. And we could see how best we can collaborate on this. That would be awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Mataishi san, for your responding、um, to the question.
Now let's move to the questions to OMC Power, Mr. Anil Raji. Um, there are two questions. Um, can you answer first of all this? How, con uh, how conducive is a policy environment in India for microgrid operation and expansion of microgrid operations to non-electrified areas? Yes, good morning. Uh, thank you, Uchi Deshan. Am I uh, audible? Can you hear me? Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, so uh, I have uh, uh, a short answer for that, actually. Yes, yeah, so in general, uh, the government's policy is extremely conducive and encouraging, I think, of, uh, uh, you know, all initiatives in uh, infrastructure and energy infrastructure. Uh, specifically, uh, each state, uh, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Jharkhand, uh, that we are aware of, they have their own policies and regulatory uh, you know, regime for uh, setting up mini grids and micro grids and so on. Uh, so I think I, if, if there's anyone interested, I would encourage you to look at the, uh, uh, for instance, the uh, Uttar Pradesh Regulatory uh, Commission, uh, UPRC, on their website, you will find the detailed policy uh, and regulatory framework for setting up uh, power plants and uh, the conclusion really is that this is uh, uh, you know it's an encouraging uh, policy uh, both for investors and, and for entrepreneurs and uh, uh, we think that's uh, uh, you know it's been very supportive for us uh, so that was uh, the first the second question would you like me to take the second one also Ochida san yes please um, let me just to repeat the question um, so there's a person asked about, uh, um, so he, he wants to understand more about your partnership with Mitsui, especially the advantages of working with them on expanding mini grid operations. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yes, uh, happy to answer that. Uh, so uh, there are a number of you know, dimensions where we have uh, a very large advantage uh, of our partnership with Mitsui. <clears throat> One is the financial dimension where uh, obviously Mitsui is a very large global company with uh, very large financial resources and those resources uh, are useful. Uh, I mean, that's really the fuel for, you know, our growth plans. So one is as an investor, I think uh, uh, Mitsui has been uh, extremely uh, helpful for us in our business. Uh, and the second is, you know, M M Mitsui's global footprint. Uh, and in all the markets that uh, we've looked at establishing ourselves, especially in Africa, uh, where we've been active in the last two, three years in business development phase, pretty much all the markets we've looked at, uh, you know, has Mitsui presence uh, for a long, long time. Uh, Mitsui is an old company. And uh, you know, in some countries in Africa, they've been present there for over 100 years. So obviously that gives us a huge advantage and credibility uh, when we're trying to enter into these markets. Uh, and thirdly, I think there's a lot of domain expertise. Mitsui again is a large co uh, conglomerate and also uh, they have substantial assets and business already in the energy field. Uh, so that competence, know-how, access to supply chain, Etc. All these are things which have uh, been a huge benefit uh, to OMC as a small company. So in all, I think uh, this really, you know, uh, to kind of paraphrase it, Mitsui has kind of turbocharged <laughs> our business. Uh, so we're uh, extremely grateful and happy for our partnership. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Raji. So there are a few questions to Dream Incubator, Mr. Eto. Uh, the first, of, first one is, uh, um, for the social impact bond, could you provide more information on the target beneficiaries? Does it focus on urban or rural elderly? Also, what segment of the elderly are you focused on? Please go on. Okay, thank you for great questions. Uh, so our target beneficiaries are over 65 year old population, especially in uh, rural, uh, not, not urban, rural areas. And uh, so we assume that if society keep uh, elderly people healthier, elderly care and medical expenses don't cost much uh, to the society. 
And uh, as I explained, uh, we set up a private Im uh, impact fund as well as a public fund. And the private impact fund provides project fee to corporates or NGOs to provide service to the target group. The service providers uh, try to facilitate the elderly people to participate in community activities and the facility communication. These things are very important to prevent uh, uh, dementia, for example. And uh, IT technology will take a significant role uh, in, in this uh, area. And uh, now we are discussing with two municipal governments in Japan. Uh, that's uh, the answer to uh, the first question. Thank you, Mr. Edo. The second question we picked up for you. Um, how do you plan to collaborate with Indian social enterprises? Are your capital pro providers supporting you in collaboration activities? such as technical assistance? So uh, we are exploring investment opportunities in social enterprises. And uh, if you have, a, uh, if you are interested in uh, Dream Incubator, uh, please uh, reach out to, to me. And uh, so we also, we, I'm a, I'm a, I was a strategic consultant. I can uh, provide some uh, so strategic uh, corporate advice, but uh, I think uh, uh, we can connect with our portfolio companies uh, in India, and if uh, there's synergy between two parties, I think uh, something may happen uh, to, to you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Eto. Um, I think we can go for the one last question to its EV. Um, uh, how to monitor battery performance, reliability, and the secondary life? Uh, Mr. Chiba, would you, um, would you able to respond to this now? Yes, uh, this time we, uh, we did uh, experiment uh, in the heat uh, chamber to make it uh, uh, just hold long time and uh, to compare with the uh, tradition, traditional uh, cells to compare with. And uh, in the uh, experimental way, uh, we set up the uh, uh, constant temperature chamber in 50 degrees centigrade and uh, just keep a long time and to check the uh, capacity of the battery. That is the way to decide the battery's uh, durability in high temperatures. Is that okay for you? Thank you, Mr. Shimada. I think that's you, uh, answering to the question. Uh, if uh, the, um, the person made a question, uh, if you want to know more, please contact uh, uh, Mr. Chiba. Uh, they yeah. have a booth in the virtual, a virtual exhibition in the, yeah. on the break. So please visit them. So I think we have finished the questions uh, Q&A session now. So let's go for the close, uh, closing remarks from Mr. Ogyu, our senior representative from JICA India office. Thank you to all speaker, uh, Bari-san, Ishigaki-san, Watai-san, Raji-san, Eto-san, Fukuoko-san, Chiba-san, who wonderful presentation at this event. Uh, JICA India Office launched the Tsunaga Lab in June this year to promote information exchange and business matching between India's uh, social enterprise and Japanese companies. Uh, the mission of Tsunaga Lab is twofold. The first is to expand the activities of Japanese company in India and uh, solve uh, social problems in India by bringing to, together Japanese companies companies with technology expertise and the in Indian social enterprise that use innovative methods to solve the local problems. Uh, secondary, we want to create an environment where people are aware of the high potential and the attractiveness of Indian social enterprise in terms of uh, finance and social returns so that collaboration with social enterprise and the investment flows can be accelerated. The road to sol solving social issues in India is not an easy one, 
but we have embarked on a journey. And this Japanese session is the first step in this journey. Uh, it is my sincere hope that this Japanese session will enable us to build relationships with Japanese companies and many Indian social enterprises. Uh, I would like to thank all the people who have come together there in support of our cause. Uh, thank you very much for coming today. Thank you.